What happens next and the issues the election is likely to be fought over. Paul, take us through the next six weeks. Well, there's only so much we can predict, Tom, of course, but let's start with what we do know. First, Parliament will be dissolved on May the 30th when MPs, of course, stop sitting in the House of Commons. Any final legislation is wound up fast, known as the wash-up period, in the coming frantic days. In fact, there are reports tonight of real concern that the compensation package for contaminated blood won't go through uh, quickly enough. Then, 25 working days after that, we get the election, which brings us to the date of July the 4th, giving parties five weeks to campaign. And these are the top five issues. Voters will judge them on ranked by the pollster Ipsos, which we'll be discussing uh, a lot over the coming weeks. First is the economy. As you've been hearing from Joel, of course, 34% of people rank that as a top priority. No surprise, the inflation figures helped spark today's announcement then. And that's followed by the NHS, with waiting times rising to a record this year. Both main parties have promised to tackle that. Then comes the cost of living, of course, closely tied to the economy, with immigration following on in fourth place, as Rishi Sunak hopes to get flights off to Rwanda around the time of polling day. And then in fifth place, it's housing, which we'll be definitely talking about too. So where will the battleground be fought most intensely? Well, the story of 2019 was the way that Boris Johnson's Conservative Party managed to pull together a coalition of traditional Tory seats in the affluent South and more deprived seats which voted Brexit in the so-called Red Wall in the North. If Labour wants to form a government, the first task is to regain what it lost and reinstate that Red Wall. Places like Burnley, Bury and Stoke-on-Trent Central. But to push on to a majority, it needs to advance further south to win seats it hasn't won in almost 20 years. Constituencies like Dover and Deal, Gloucester, and also one in Hatfield. Not to mention the very significant story, of course, in Scotland, where it's in a key race against the SNP, particularly there in the central belt. If Labour can pull this off, Sir Keir Starmer will enter Downing Street as the first Labour Prime Minister in 14 years. The youngest voters in this election probably can't remember the last Labour Prime Minister. That's if Rishi Sunak can't pull off a surprise of historic proportions himself.